it gives me great pleasure to welcome back once again an evening with Mr. Richard Sawyer. I'm going to wait and see this display here. Uh, speaking of Camp Severe, not only the 30th Division trained out there, the 81st Division trained, and the 20th Division Division was just organized as the war ended. And there is no record of a 20th Division in World War I. However, I have a yard-long photo, photo of the 20th Division at Camp Severe. It's a New York uh, unit, and I sent them the photo so they could put it in their records. Hmm. Was that a black? Was that a black? No. It was one of X. Spartanburg. It was one of X. They were Camp Bonnerville. They were Camp Bonnerville from Spartanburg. Yeah, Wadsworth. Yeah, Spartanburg. Okay, last time we went back in Greenville County history. We went back 10,000 years ago. We came up through the formation of Greenville County. Does anyone want to cover any of that again? Do you have any questions? No? Okay. We'll start off with the uh, 17, 1786. A new county was formed. And this county was called Greenville. G-R-E-E-N-E-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And here's the document that established Greenville County. And of course, you know, we don't carry the extra E now. <coughs> After the uh, Revolutionary War, the land in Greenville County were open for settlement. A man by the name of Thomas Brandon, who happened to be the commissioner that sold the lands in South Carolina, sold himself. The Richard Parrish Place and about 10 square miles. Like I said last time, the first land fraud in Greenville. Le uh, Lemuel Austin uh, purchased lands for 400 acres from Thomas Brandon. Lemuel Austin is an early, very important person in Greenville County. He was elected to the South Carolina legislature from Greenville County. He was a delegate that ratified the U.S. Constitution. In 1794, Richard Parrish died in the Bahamas. Uh, like I said last time, it was very disappointing when we read the will of Richard Parrish because his Cherokee son did more for him than any other of his children. But he didn't leave his Indian uh, Cherokee son anything. He was already gone to uh, Oklahoma. In 1797, how many have heard that Greenville was once called Pleasant Bird? It was never called Pleasant Bird. Lemuel Austin decided he was going to build a little town. And he drew up this plat. And the name of this plat was Pleasant Bird. But Greenville was always known as Greenville Courthouse. It was never called Pleasant Bird. In, well, in uh, 1799, Lemuel Alston built a home. If you know where the waterworks is located, in downtown Greenville, this is the location of his home. One of the interesting things about this home, and we did an excavation up there when they put the water uh, system in up there, the kitchen of the old house was separate from the houses because they would burn and burn the house down. The kitchen to this house is underneath the front porch. Never figured that one out. <coughs> Uh, they're, they're interrelated, Charleston, they're all interrelated. The name of this home was called Prospect Hill. In 1804, Elias uh, Earl 
is elected to the 9th Congress from the U.S. District, Greenville District. In 1806, Lemuel Austin is elected to the 10th Congress. 1810, Elias Earl defeats him again. This kind of makes old uh, Lemuel Austin mad. So he decides to sell his property in Prospect Hill. And he moves on to Alabama. A man from Lincolnton, North Carolina, by the name of Vardry Mackby, purchased the land. He purchased 11,028 acres for $27,550. That'll probably get you one square foot in downtown Greenville today. Although Vardry Mackby purchased the land, he did not move to Greenville. He operated the uh, Prospect Hill as a hotel. He began to develop his property holdings here in Greenville. In 1816, he built a mill on the Reedy River Falls. And this is the mill he built right here. In 1829, he built another mill, and this is the rock mill. In 1920, this mill was torn down, and the rocks for it was moved out to East North, or Northgate. There's a, look, looks like a mansion out there. Have you all seen that? If you go out East North Street, you'll see it on the left. And if you look right in the center, you'll see this big old tower, these big old rocks. These are the rocks that came from the Vardry Mill. In 1835, a carriage factory was established on the north side of the Reed River, and it was run by Ebenezer Gower and Thomas Cox. In 1836, Vardry Mackby moved to Greenville. In 1851, an institution moved to Greenville. And this is Furman University. Furman purchased from Vardry Mackby 25 acres of land along the Reedy River for $3,750. I don't know if they get you through one semester out there now, would it? Huh? Yeah, a week. On January the 6th, 1872, they purchased another 25.1 acres for $3,765. In 1857, a new building was added to the uh, Reedy River, and this was called the Greenville Coach Factory. It is still there, there, still there now. It is in, with, incorporated within the uh, Peace Center, and if you'll go down there and look, there's one building that has one slant on it. It was built in 1857, and that's the oldest building surviving in downtown Greenville. That picture, that must be where the bell tower. Oh yeah, Furman had a bell tower, and I'll, something else I'll mention real fast. A lot of people, you'll go out to Furman, you'll see the bell tower. They moved that bell tower out here from Furman. No, they built another one. It's a replica. The original one was torn down. In 1861, a regiment of troops known as the 16th South Carolina was raised in Greenville. The uh, 16th operated in several states during the Civil War. In South Carolina, they were at Charleston, Adams Run, and Johns Island. In Georgia, they were at Atlanta, Kennesaw Mountain, Pine Knot, Mount, Pine Knot Mountain, Calhoun, Peachtree Creek, Lovejoy Station, and Decatur. In Mississippi, uh, they were at Vicksburg and Jackson. In Tennessee, the 16th was at Chickamauga, Missionary Ridge, and Franklin. Now those of you who studied your Civil War, you know about Franklin. The 16th South Carolina was decimated. 
at Franklin. They lost 56 men in that one battle. On January the 23rd, 1864, Vardry Mackey died in Greenville. Sometimes he is called the father of Greenville and he's buried at Christ Church. On, uh, in 1865, Greenville was raided by Colonel Stoneman's Brigade, uh, Colonel Brown of Stoneman's Brigade out of Tennessee. No measurable damage was done in the Greenville area. Greenville was kind of pro-union. We had a man here in Greenville that was extremely pro-union. Pro he ran a newspaper. In 1865 also, of course everyone had Confederate money up until the end of the Civil War. The credit of the Vardry Mills on the Reedy River was so good they issued their own money. That's the only piece we've ever seen. It was widely used in Upper South Carolina and Western North Carolina. In 1866, the Furman Institute's name was changed to Furman University. In 1873, a substantial bridge was built across the Reedy River, and it is known as the Gower Bridge. This is a wooden bridge. Although it is a substantial bridge, you could not take horses and wagons across. You had to come out and ford the river right here and go back up on the other side. In 1875, a second textile mill was built along the northeastern bank, and this was known as the Camperdown Mill. In 1882, a third mill was built on the Northwest Bank, and this is known as the Huguenot Mill. Well, that was the Huguenots down around the Charleston area, so I don't know how, what their connection was to it. But the unique thing about this mill, built in 1882, it was totally electrified. Although built on the Reedy River, they used electricity. In 1889, an old, the old wooden bridge known as the Gower Bridge was removed and a new steel bridge was placed across the Reedy River. In 1893, a new college comes to Greenville, and this college is called Chakora. It's a Presbyterian college for women. It was built on the home site of Vardry Macby's son, Alexander, and this site is known as Macby Terrace. In 1911, the old steel bridge is torn down and a new concrete bridge is built across the Rita River. And that's the one that we have now. It was built in 1911. In 1913, a new warehouse was built for the Camperdown Mill on Main Street. The note, today we know this as the Trexler Building. And if you've been in Greenville a long time, that was uh, what peanuts. Uh, what was the peanuts here in Greenville? Oh. Huh? No, it wasn't planters. Uh, my dad went to school with one of his sons because he'd stop by and get peanuts every morning, put them in his pocket, and he'd go into class and everybody would smell peanuts. I'll think of it before we leave. 
in 1915 in a dispute with the uh, city of Greenville, the uh, Presbyterians decided to move Chicora to Columbia. The campus site was sold to C.C. Good, who operated a theater at the site. Apartments were open, and, is, and it was known as the Colonial Apartments. On the morning of April 26, 1919, 2 o'clock in the morning, a fire was discovered at the old Colonial Apartments. In what was called the worst fire in Greenville's history up to that time, Old Chicor burned. The fire was so intense that it actually set a house on fire behind what we used to call the Greenville News building, back on the back side. Uh, let me tell you a little interesting, well not that one. In 1920, the Vardrin Mill, known as the Stone Mill, was torn down and the rock was used to uh, construct the Gasaway Mansion off of East North Street. In 1928, the Vardner Mill on the Lower, File, Lower Falls was uh, listed in the city directory for the last time. On November the 9th, 1943, the old Vardner Mill was discovered down there. At this time the mill had closed. Furman University was stacking cardboard and papers and all kind of stuff in the mill. This is during World War II now. Well it burned. I think it's about five, six, seven years ago there's a celebration in Greenville, 4th of July called the Red, White, and Blue. Well I was up there and a guy came by and he was looking through my little 10,000 years of Greenville County history book. He says, well, he says, I know all about the Vardry Mill. I said, well, tell me about it. He said, I burn it down. You burn it down? He said that him and a couple other of his buddies that lived in the camper down was down there playing in it and they had taken in sodas and with a candle and came out and left the candle in there, and it burnt to the ground. I don't think he had ever told anybody that story before. It just so happened, the next day, his brother was coming up from Charlestown. I said, don't say anything to him. Just bring him around and introduce him. So he did. And right next to where I was at, right across the river, they had a static display of old fire trucks. Well, he comes over and introduces him. I'll just say his name's John Brown. I said, John Brown, John Brown. I said, we've been looking for a John Brown for a long time. He said, why? I said, did you burn down the camper down mill? His eyes got about that big. So, I eventually let him off the hook and I said, by the way, we knew you were coming to town so we brought the fire trucks in. That was a good one. In 1956, the Camperdown Mill closed. And in 1958, the Camperdown Mill was torn down. From the 1920s to the 1960s, the Reedy River was used as a dumping ground for garbage and sewage. I came to Greenville in 1949. You could not walk on South Main Street on a hot day. The smell was so bad. Not only the sewage and the water, but you also had the Ballantyne Meat Packing Company. And they were flushing all their stuff right down the Reedy River. So, it, it was something else. In 1960, a bridge was constructed across the Reedy River Falls without the regard that this is the most historic site in Greenville. For some reason, Greenville likes to put bridges across waterfalls. I don't know why. 
beautiful when that thing's open. From the 1967 to 1987, the Carolina Foothills Garden Club, Furman University, and the City Planning Commission reclaimed 26 acres along the Reedy River and developed into a historic park. In 1988, the Peace Center for the Performing Arts was constructed on the northwest, northwest bank of the Reedy River. I can, my grandfather worked at Furman from 1923 to 1958 and I roamed that campus and even today I can drive down Main Street and look over there and see those lights on that hill and it reminds me of old Furman. In 1991 the CNS Bank was torn down and the Bowwater building was constructed. Does everyone know where the Bowwater building is? If we ever have an earthquake in Greenville, or another earthquake in Greenville, we had one in 1969, I remember it well, go to the Bowwater building. That thing's sitting on a massive, massive, massive rock. In 1992, the Reedy River Historic Park was dedicated. In 1999, the Governor's School was built on the old Furman campus. On July the 27th through the 28th, 2004, north of Greenville, a little storm grew up. And it rained for two to three days. And the outline, Spartanburg didn't get any rain, West Hubs didn't get any rain. It was just along the Reedy River Basin. And it was a mass flood. Is that the one that fell a hundred years ago? That was at least a hundred years ago. Old dummy here, they had it marked off. Well, I'm going to take some pictures anyway. So I go on down there. There's a cement path that goes around, and I'm standing on cement path, and water's over my shoes. A couple of days later, I go back down there, and where I was standing wasn't there. Right around that bend, they'd taken out trees and everything down there. In 2004, the Liberty uh, Bridge was built across the Reedy River Falls. It's 355 foot long and is 90 foot above the water. Once again, we got a falls, we got to put a bridge on it. And I just, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. And that'll take us up to present. Of course, everybody knows. We'll give, this will give you a little bit better idea of how big the water is. The old dump truck. It was a massive, massive thing. And that brings us up to present. Anyone have any questions? No. Yeah. He's done uh not twice done a lot for Greenville. He really has. He brought a lot bringing a lot of industry into Greenville. One thing I, I want to mention, did every anyone take the Greenville News? Did you read about the archaeological history-making event in Greenville County? Greenville County has made archaeological history. In two, the year 2000, workmen were digging in New York City. They had dug down about 10 foot and they found this piece of telephone wire. And they had it tested and they had it dated back to about 1895 and they determined that was the oldest telephone wire in the United States. Well about 2005 in San Francisco they were laying some pipe and they found some old cable and they thought it was older than New York so they had it tested. 
1892. Well, there's a guy up in northern Greenville County. Now, if I was in northern Greenville County, I'd say he's in southern Greenville County. But he's in northern Greenville County. He read the article, said, hmm, I wonder if I could find anything if I went out and dug a little bit. So he goes out and digs, 10 foot down, nothing. 15 foot down, nothing. He was getting kind of frustrated. So he dug down to 17 foot and guess what he found? Nothing. <laughs> well, this kind of perplexed him. So he went home, he thought about it, and the next day it hit him. Greenville County, South Carolina, had the first wireless system in the United States. Don't let that go again now. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't get that? He didn't find anything, so he determined that we had the first wireless system. Anyone have any questions? Yeah. What's the projection of what's, what Green was going to be? What's your projection of what Green was going to be? You get out of town and there's just nothing but apartments and I don't know where the people are coming from. I know, I don't know where they're coming from either. And can afford those apartments. <laughs> well, they say one, I've heard all my life, one day Charlotte, I mean, uh, Charlotte and Atlanta will join. Mm -hmm. it, you know, not in our lifetime, certainly. But, Recently, how long does it take, take it for you all to realize that your town is, you know, whether it's Spartanburg, Greenville, that all of a sudden it's got, it's been the last 10 years? Oh no. The last 20 years? At least 25, 30 years. It's been growing. I know, I went in service in 65, when I came back in 69, I didn't recognize Greenville. My record point was Paris. Paris Mountain. You know, years ago you heard conversations about someday there would be a high speed drill line control. Right. Yeah. Look what we've gone through in the past fifty years, last one hundred years. A hundred years from now we can't even imagine what's going on around here. You could be in Charlotte and say, beam me to Atlanta and they'll appear in Atlanta. Or in Atlanta. Or in Atlanta. Or in Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. Yeah, travel time. I know I, I don't get real bad about driving. I just drove. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm sorry. I'm getting real bad about driving. I just drove 800 miles a weekend before last and didn't like to kill me. I think it's the diver it diversification of, 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 well, like you've got uh, aircraft industry coming in, you've got car making coming in, and there's probably going to be more car making coming in this area. Mm -hmm. Now see, one time Green was known as the textile center of the world. Textiles, but yeah. the Overseas. Overseas. But Greenville has always been a diverse economy. It's never really depended on one thing. And of course, if you're in the textile industry and you have World War I, you have World War II, that really helps, helps it along. The workforce is really good. The workforce is really good. I really believe that for capital, Greenville has one of the highest per capita. And certainly Greenville Tech doesn't hurt. I know I spent 30, 30 years, 4 months, and 15 days out there. Yeah, where is that? What is it? Greenville Tech. Greenville Technical College. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs>
It's a it's a community college. Oh. Started in 1962. It costs about what? A thousand dollars a year to do a college. I would think that's cheap. It is cheap. I'm saying it's very cheap. Yeah. A thousand dollars a year to do a college, a year of college, a year of college education. And what people don't realize is they can go to Clemson and spend five thousand dollars, or they can go to Greenville Tech and spend one thousand dollars. English is English at both. Yeah. I know. Well, you know, and this is true. If you give Greenville Tech one million dollars, they may have built an app. They were supposed to go into the water system building. You know, they built that new building. That's why we were up there. We haven't seen them. But we found some interesting things up there. The doorknobs off the house. Found that you know, there was a school there, Central High School, and Greenville <coughs> High and Greenville Junior High was on that site. And we found the old ink wells. And there's some pretty neat stuff. Stone axe was found up there. Did you go to Greenville? Did you go to Greenville? Greenville High School? The she? Central? Seneca. Okay. One of the interesting things that you find in Greenville is the old mill villages. If you lived in Brandon, you did not associate with any other mill villages. Each one had their own cliques. Even today, uh, Bates Mill, if you move out there, you really, unless you work at that mill, you don't belong out there. Do you remember the Rocky Cherry Theater? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. First one that had a air conditioning, the Rocky Cherry Theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carolina, Paris, Centric, Center, Fox. Talked about the Cherokee app. Mm -hmm. Was that the Trail of Tears? Was that the Trail of Tears? No. Was that the South? Was it? it was uh, basically ran from Virginia down to uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, into Georgia. Oh. No, Trail of Trail of Tears did, but the old Cherokee path run north south. Have you been up on Highway 11? Or you go through Traveler's Rest and go like you're going to Asheville. That's an old Cherokee trail. And if you'll notice the roads in Greenville, as you're driving around, look, and you'll see you're up on a little plateau. And these were like old trails where they built these roads. Right now, the only old, only mill I know is operating is Dunning and uh, oh gosh, Judson. I think they still they're still operating in a small amount, but Dunning's still up, still running, but not as a textile industry. It's, they make like carpet, maybe carpet, something like that. You remember, Automobile. You remember the 1960s when the house was the first air conditioning? I remember that, and I remember when it burned, too. <laughs> but it was quite an attraction. Yeah. And if you know Wade Hampton uh, Boulevard, that was known as the Great White Way because that was the first lit highway. 
going out of Greenville. They had big old lights. Uh, you'll hear people refer to refer to, to uh, the old Camp Road, Rutherford. That's where Camp Severe was at. You had another road called the New Buncombe Road. That's now known as Poinsett Highway. But you can hear a lot of old commercials. And they'll say on the old Buncombe Road. And then uh, one of the interesting things I found, WFBC Radio put out a disc on their history. And they actually had the recording from when they signed on, I think it was 1933. But I think it was 46, there was a laundry in Greenville called the Ideal Laundry. And it blew up. I know a man in uh, Fountain Inn said they heard it down there. Well, there was a uh, reporter who went in the building next to it, and he was hooked his mic up to a phone somehow and was transmitting live over the air. And uh, evidently, the fire marshal come in and says, "Well, we think there's some more uh, gas tanks, and they may explode." You know what a producer told him? Can you get any closer? Norvin Duncan. Norvin Duncan. But Greenville's an interesting place. It really is. Thank you. I think one of the things that has reached people coming is they're aware of the South and the American perspective. It's made a lot more comfortable for us to live in the South. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you.